I think what's been really exciting as we talk about the transition of this out of my career but into the role is that as you said the causes that have been very important to me I can focus even more energy on because very early out of the gate I think you realize once you have access or a voice that people are willing to listen to with that comes a lot of responsibility mm. which I take seriously and it was really one of the first things we connected on it was one of the yeah. first things we started talking about when we met was just the different things that we wanted to do in the world and how passionate we were about seeing change I think that was um, mm. That's what got date two <laughs> in the books, probably. Well, that's right. There's plenty to talk about. My name is Harry, and I'm from London. Meghan Markle here. Today is October 8th, 2023. It is 3.11 a.m. I write my back end, 3,351. Estimate revenue, $326.27. Analytics. Okay, there it is, $326.27. The last 48 hours, I had 5,585 views. And for subscribers, 3,351 subscribers. All right, so I, this is my list. I have about 20 tweets. A lot of them are videos. And I had some politics days from yesterday. I didn't feel like talking about them. So I still then, I don't think I wanna talk about it. And there's a lot of new things that's coming out in terms of politics regarding Middle East and you know what's going with Israel <sighs> so much that I see going on and I've put some stuff on my community board we need to stay focused in the US we truly need to stay focused because this is almost like another distraction similar to what happened to Ukraine and um, and Russia so this is another sidetrack this was coming because there were a lot of things leading up to that but i don't want to talk about it i'm still talking about it but um i want to focus with some other tweets that i came across that i just want to share with you instead all right so let's go on twitter um let's see the first tweet let's see i started making the list since i finished my last recording but um i forgot what some of them are okay so let's see here there's a reason why I've not been silent since yesterday. We have been infiltrated. Some people are out to portray us a what we are not. Okay, stop and look around. No fan of Megan will say this. Don't be deceived by profiling pictures or a few word or, or a few good tweet. Don't let them win. Okay, I think I posted this on my community board. I'm gonna block some stuff here because there's some word. It seems like they are code words. Yeah. Um, and yesterday I was actually removing some crazy comments on, on my comment section, uh, saying, s calling, I, I know, I read my comments. I know the typical, uh, comments that I usually get. Sometimes I don't respond. I put a like to let you know, yeah, I saw your comment or something like that. But when you see people calling each other out and say some silly stuff, I just want to get you off my, my page. Okay, as much as I want my channel to grow, I'm not dying for it. Okay, I'm not here for this nonsense. Whoever feel like they're coming to f for some sort of a fight, just unsubscribe, unsubscribe. I don't need this headache. Even though the thing wasn't meant for me, it's for my other uh, viewers. I want my, you know, my channel to be a, a space where we could have honest discussion whether you agree with me or disagree a lot of time i've had comments where people are disagree with me and we go back and forth in terms of real discussion but when you see people start 
shifting off in a different branch, calling names and stuff. I don't want that. I don't want that. Okay, this should be some sort of an adult channel where you have honest discussion, whether you agree or disagree. All right, so I was just removing and blocking. All right, and when you guys come across some of these uh, comments, you know, don't even bother to engage. It could be very, very uh, upsetting when you see this is the thing that's happening. You know, they're just trying to trigger. All right, this is how my timeline on so on Twitter is usually clean. You say your thing. If they're coming back for a, a, a different way, like uh, little kids and a, a sandbox kind of thing, you block them. If they cannot have an honest discussion, just remove yourself from them. You could, they could have the last laugh. It's fine. It's fine. Okay? But um, just let me know, and then I'll just block. And if I can remove them on my, uh, never to comment on my thing, I'll be more than happy to do that. Okay? So I'm just going to read some, not a lot. Okay, I can't find this on her profile. May I suggest you delete this so others outside the group don't think this is who we are. Oh my God, what a mean and silly post. I agree with you. That person is not a squatty. Okay, this one starts. That's a long chain. Uh, this is terrible. That person is a bigot. Why are they harassing Jen? Yes, this is a basis. This is why I've been talking since yesterday. I understand people are upset with Jennifer. Who is Jennifer? But this is a low blow. What are we, the Rangers? That last statement was so uncalled for. I stand against racism. Okay, I don't even see why anyone should be angry with a journalist sharing her picture with other journalists. Ah, oh, does that have to do with uh, the picture where Megan uh, took with uh, these three other people? Uh, on my last video, I think some people were making reference uh, to one of the ladies who were in the picture as that young girl when um, she asked Megan for a hug during the walkabout when the, what do you call this, when uh, at the when the queen passed. Okay, they've called her names that cannot be mentioned. She doesn't deserve this madness. That's crazy. Yeah, I didn't even know that was about um, uh, th that picture. This is crazy. Yeah, definitely not the squaddies. Squaddies are professionals. They are... Uh, I mean, don't get me wrong, you get on that wrong side, they call you out, but they don't start non nonsense like that. All right, next tweet. It is very serious to why isn't Workshy Willie over there sorting out peace in the Middle East. At one time, that was his lifetime aim. Okay, this one I think I posted on my community board as well, because I was trying not to say things to be, to sound somewhat insensitive. So I just posted it and said, I don't want to share what was going on in my mind. But I was laughing about it because <laughs> it, because that was, he claimed that was his life, lifetime aim. The latest violence between Palestinian militants in Israel and pictures. Yeah, that was going on over there. Like I said at the beginning of this video, it's similar to what's going on, on in uh, Ukraine. When you look at what's happening, it's very well calculated. It's close to when we are about to have in the u.s we are about to have uh election okay this is how they distract us and i hope many of us start knowing the pattern of things as much as we we, we hate when um people are going through these kind of things but we need to focus on our own first we need to get over that hurdle 2024 is another equalizer i call it equalizer when you look at 2020 the balance of things the numbers i don't know I, am i suspicious about things like that and when you look at 2024 this is another equalizer okay so we need to jump that hurdle to go continue our path onto a, a well-minded path kind of way not going forward in a blind way because we see the pattern of things how things is moving how the well-established people who well who are well off are using other people for their own action for their own agenda that's not action for their own agenda so this I, as much as i feel bad for what's going on in the middle east but uh, the United States needs to focus on what's going on at home because this is another distraction to make us lose our focus. 
okay when you look at the numbers 2024 20, both side when you look two and two is four and then you have the four and the 24 okay that's another equalizer we need to jump it this is what almost when you look at 2020 as well 2020 vision when you put 20 on both sides of the scale it's balanced out we need i'm sorry this sounds so freaking crazy even saying it but i feel like we need to understand what's going on here we are in a very pivotal moment in our lifetime we need to jump those hurdles for our kids and our future to have a better future if we do that we should we will be okay okay the same way we're having issues with um 2020 what we saw was happening because of that let me put the next one here this is a thing i put near the end uh let me move it let me show you what i'm doing here uh, i had this last even though i said i wasn't gonna talk about politics at the bottom which one did i just do here 93 that was this one let's put it here because i sort of mentioned politics here so let's do this i think it has to do something similar in that nature let's put it here and let's move this in the back okay so what this about oh did i miss some? oh i missed the two in the back five two okay so what was it oh okay so i saw this this was very interesting okay that's some real shit right there if it's a biden and trump race i will vote for biden even if he was dead and i'm a republican a pennsylvania voter to meet the press host Kristen walker and this is the thing what we did if you look back on PYTE, some of the things that i said and i remember one specific um thumbnails that i did i put three pictures of profile pictures of three women um stacy abram uh eva longoria and a random picture of a native american and i said this is what saved democracy this what happened in 2020 was a lifeline for those who did not see what what was going on the blind so these were the groups that truly truly save america until now we still in a you know in a very pivotal moment we're not fully recovered yet because we need more people to be on board because what we were seeing in the 2020 election they were using uh you know the same tactic the racist kind of tactic and all of that but a good portion of people okay african american native american and some hispanic very few not all very few hispanic saw what was going on we helped the majority of white people to to see what we saw okay because they didn't see it before all they saw was black and white okay the racism and all of that many of them were not voting based on substance they were voting based on race this is the thing here the uk does the same thing when it's time for election the us have been doing it many many times but this time the 2020 was a lifeline for america okay those three groups help save democracy don't get me wrong there are a lot of white people who saw the things too but they were not as great numbers as african-american definitely Amer african-american and hispanic and native american okay so we gave them a lifeline to see what we saw and many more are seeing it and this is why i put this next okay it's 20 second video let's listen is there any chance you would stay at home on election day no I, I love American democracy too much that uh, Biden and Trump, if it's a Biden and Trump race, then I would vote for Biden, even if he was dead. No chance I'd stay home. I've never and I'm a this. Republican. Is there any chance you would and stay at home? the other thing as well, as much we may think, some other Republican that's running for office right now, who seems, I don't know, I don't even follow them. I don't even need to listen to them. I know recently they just had a debate. I don't even bother listen to it, okay? Because right now, they all are on the same page. Even if they say something different, once they become 
president, if they become president, they will do exactly what Trump has been doing. And then they will make Trump go free without any consequences. So I don't even want to see what they're saying, whatever it is. I will not be voting for any Republican. All right. So, yeah, I just wanted you guys to hear this, but let me read whatever is here. Okay. He ain't wrong though. More of this, please. And thank you. This here is the real silent majority. And this is what the pills are missing. Okay. I'm surprised MSM let him slip through to be pulled like this. I believe there are more of these guys everywhere. My former Republican neighbors hate uh, Trump. Was it TFG? What's TFG? More than I do, if even possible. They registered to Andy after January 6th and can oh independent I guess that's what it is after January 6th can't wait to vote for Joe again okay this thread start up here I hear what they're saying and I see his lip moving but I remember that he's a self-proclaimed Republican who is a white man and I believe him nearly as much as I believe I can throw the Atlantic Ocean <laughs> I believe him. He said that with his whole chest, LOL. I think so too. I think many of them are starting to see what's going on. I think many of them, maybe the last election, he voted for Trump due to his insecurity and blindness. But I think now many of them are starting to see what's going on. I think many of them, why they're seeing it? Because they see, uh, it's not black people telling them the truth anymore. It's not black people telling them. It's not Hispanic who's telling them. It's not Native American who's telling them. It's their own white people who's been in the game, who know what's going on, who see what's going on, and then they're telling them exactly what's going on. I'm Miles Taylor. I served as the Chief of Staff of the Department of Homeland Security under the Donald Trump administration. I would go into the office, I would read my intelligence brief, and then it was my job to help the Department of Homeland Security to keep our country safe. What we saw week in and week out, and for me after two and a half years in that administration, was terrifying. We would go in to try to talk to them about a pressing national security issue, cyber attack, terrorism threat. He wasn't interested in those things. To him, they weren't priorities. The president wanted to exploit the Department of Homeland Security for his own political purposes and to fuel his own agenda. The California wildfires, on a phone call with the Federal Emergency Management Agency, told FEMA to cut off the money and to no longer give individual assistance to California. He told us to stop giving money to people whose houses had burned down from a wildfire because he was so rageful that people in the state of California didn't support him and that politically it wasn't a base for him. the policies at the border. He wanted to restart zero tolerance and separate families. He said he wanted to go further and have a deliberate policy of ripping children away from their parents to show those parents that they shouldn't come to the border in the first place. A lot of the time, the things he wanted to do not only were impossible, but in many cases illegal. He didn't want us to tell him it was illegal anymore because he knew that there were, and these were his words, he knew that he had magical authorities. He was one of the most unfocused and undisciplined senior executives I've ever encountered. I came away completely convinced based on firsthand experience that the president was ill-equipped and wouldn't become equipped to do his job effectively. And what's worse was actively doing damage to our security. People who are still serving in this administration have said to me, just wait until the second term. It'll be no holds barred. It'll be shock and awe. We'll do what we want. Given what I've experienced in the administration, I have to support Joe Biden for president. And even though I'm not a Democrat, even though I disagree on key issues, I'm confident that Joe Biden will protect the country. And I'm confident he won't make the same mistakes as this president. So they will rather believe their own white counterpart than if it was a black person who was telling them that. Okay? So I truly believe what he says here. All right, let's go to the next tweet. And I think that's all I have with uh, politics. So I got that politics out of the way. So we all a bit more into uh, the Sussex Squad kind of thing, Harry and Megan. All right, so that's this here. To this day, it infuriates me that the British royal family colluded with UK media to brand everything Megan Marco did as bad. Vogue edit, bad. Smart set, bad. 
cookbook, bed, cradling tummy, bed, wearing suit, bed. Then after driving her away, British royal family cravenly attempt to copy everything she did. Okay, this is their typical, okay? This is their blueprint from way, 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 way back, okay? Centuries. This is their way. They destroy everywhere they go and then they copy the things that those people have been doing and then the originality of thing can never be seen can never be really recognized or acknowledged because they take it and make it their own and you could never really find the true foundation of things because they went and destroy and then take it making making it their own so this is them this is the devil's work okay they destroy the original they copy it and then you could never find the original again okay so this is them that's their blueprint okay it's hilarious and propagandist work yep it's truly scary it is incredible how they attack everything she did then copied it all once she was gone i mean the audacity is just so rage inducing okay, thanks okay this is someone that i blacked thanks for giving it to me feel free to continue to boost my engagement i love this tweet it is 100% true and their actions are unforgivable. I can get over, quote, closing your car door and having binders ready for work, end quote, as all bed. What? Right. What is it? And then after the binders thing, you see them walking with things, even a luggage I saw and I <laughs> analyzed it the way the arm um, was holding it. I was like, there's no way there's anything in that uh, suitcase. Why? That is why I like calling out the hypocrisy every chance I get. Yeah, but Megan is moving on and I'm glad she is. Karma has no expiration date. Exactly. Okay, so these are the things that uh, they be talking about. Okay, they all are baggage for God. You could pause your screen and read it. Uh, no lies were detected. There's this clown. All right, so let's go to the next tweet. This one is another video. there's some stuff i have and they should be in order but for some reason i don't think um i have them in order okay this video i've shared that already it's just a different caption but because those who probably didn't see the previous video when i first share it i will play it again okay one of the most gratifying thing about being a squaddy is that while the royal family has its media gun and online tools engaged in 24-7, 365, anti-Megan propaganda, the truth of Megan's story trend organically at least once a month. Okay, so there's this. Who is she? She's dragging them all. So this was way back probably in 2019, but for some reason it's coming back again. And uh, now we know the truth, and this is what uh, Cholan is so, so, sort of saying. Even though at the time, you know and let's say for instance in the present they're going crazy with their lies okay they made the lies trend this is what i mean when they want something to be known they will stand on their rooftop and scream it out for everybody to know and then they, you think it will die out they could have their day now but in the future the truth starts spreading out eventually okay so this is what i think uh cholani is saying so let's listen to this again if you've seen it feel free to skip but who knows, maybe I'll have something new to add to it. Two minutes and five seconds. Ten as well. We've got to distinguish between intent, intended racism and accidental racism. Yeah. Otherwise, we don't give people the chance to redeem themselves. If everything is racist, whether you intended it or not, then there's no forgiveness. There's no redemption and there's no apology. The concept of forgiveness. There's no apology. Why yeah. apologize if you're guilty anyway? Yeah. Then that's it. You can't change it. You know, and uh, you know, it's... Do you not accept that? I mean, you're sitting back and I get your... I the first time that I mentioned it was when uh, someone mentioned about uh, uh, NDN being some sort of a gatekeeper for racism. Now, listening to him again, saying, even if you said, you already said, why even apology? apologize? But there's the form of remorse. This is why remorse is there. To show the person that, okay, I could understand before I saw something this way, but now... I understand I'm that way now. And you have to show in terms of human interaction, how you see things differently to show the apologize, uh, to apologize to the person. So the person's feeling could be somewhat different. And he's saying, hey, you already said, why even apologize? 
they all need to go to it themselves and other but the thing is that a lot of Indian have have gone through so much already it's very sad to see many of them just wash it off they're just using them like they said for gatekeeping kind of thing but it's sad it's sad but let's continue I'm ready to speak. I haven't had a chance to come in. In Please. response to your question, Carol, you know, my issue is that everybody makes the person who does the racist thing the victim. So you're asking, no. is it right that he was no. sacked? Greg's saying he's a nice guy, he's, he's going to lose his job. You know, how is he the victim in this scenario? This is a pregnant woman who had to arrange new levels of protection because of the amount of racist abuse she was receiving, which escalated when she announced she was pregnant. She's always had racist abuse, but when she announced her pregnancy, it multiplied because there is so much toxic racism in our society. That's not Danny Baker's fault. That's yes. not Danny Baker's fault, but what is Danny Baker's fault is that he did something which was so offensive that when I first saw it, I actually thought it was a prank. I just thought nobody, nobody who the BBC gives a platform she could be stupid enough to say this and not intend it to be racist because it is one of, and we could talk about unintended racism or microaggressions, this is none of those. This is the most blatant, clear-cut example of racism. It's that generations of people have recognized this as an overtly racist trope. Within people's lifetimes, black people were still being compared to monkeys and dehumanized but, regularly. So the sacking is right. So think? I'm not interested in him. I'm not interested in him or what happens to him. By the way, he's already done a show which was more successful than his previous shows since he's been sacked. So if you're worried about his career, then I suspect... No one's worried about his career. No so that's how the... Uh, the negativity attracts so many empty minds. So I don't know who this person she's making reference to. So he did something, from my understanding, he did something somewhere, he was sacked, and then he moved to another place, and it seems like it's becoming more successful, right? So which means there's a lot of empty mind who's chasing the negativity, this kind of thing. You know, so God needs to do something. Our world is becoming blind and blind, but we need to drop that thing to make people see the truth and start changing. And this kind of thing, the insensitivity that we are seeing here, it's been going on. It started little at a time. Let couple groups get away with certain things. Is the um, what do you call this? Is uh, less no sequen consequences of things. Okay, let people get away with things little at a time, and then it's becoming more and more. And as they let certain group get away with certain things, when there should be punishment and stuff like that, because we live we're living in a society where everyone has to be somewhat respected to you know to a certain degree. So they're letting certain people get away with things. And then they become uh, at ease with it. Okay, they could get away with this. So they try another thing, they get away with it. They try another thing, they get away with it. Now it become part of them where they could do whatever they want. And then we're seeing all of this. And then earn a <sighs> ability to judge this kind of thing, to put things into perspective. Can no, it's not there anymore. It's not there anymore. It's very scary when you think about it. Even, I don't know if I'm making sense with this. But let's continue. Okay. I'm not interested in him. Talking. I'm worried about the millions of black people who regularly live with this kind of abuse and then have to be in spaces like this where everybody denies it's a problem. That is something that I could not feel more strongly about. And I'm, I'm living it right now in this conversation. It's not, it's not good enough. Uh, I can't believe I even have more things to say about this video. This is like the third time I've shared it on my video, uh, on my channel. All right, so there's this here. Uh, your squad is even attack each other. They are mean and nasty to everyone who doesn't agree with them. At least those who dislike Megan are not rude and nasty to others or each other. Read your squad is comment. Okay, this one needs to be black because this is not true. <laughs> you see, there's nobody um, following them. I understand there's some people, if they don't understand, because I had some squaddies too who were trying to cancel me out. I, what was I saying? Oh, PP loan stacking. But they didn't know what I meant by that. What was I seeing? I think it was an image of, could it be a Lily uh, in a grainy picture? And she had uh, two, what do you call this? Two ponytails? 
on side of her head and i think i said something about pp lawn stacking and i forgot the whole thing but i remember it make reference to pp lawn stacking some people then know and i think i put a gif the gif uh i don't know what offense this person took it's a squaddy who took offense to the squaddy and to the gif and then said call me out and said needs to be uh people needs to black me so i took a what do you call i took a screenshot of that person who was calling me out and i said why would you call me out on what i've said and very rarely i start new tweets i usually respond to tweets that already there like for instance something like this if i see it, i will respond and say something right so this is me on twitter respond and back up other squaddies right very rarely i start a brand new one but when i do when i do start a brand new one either i'm joking or I feel strongly about something like that, about whatever it is that I'm uh, writing about. Sometimes I, I hate doing threads, but sometimes my uh, original tweets will come on a thread because I have something to say. So if I feel strongly about something, you could call me out on it because I have backup. I could back up what I'm talking about. So when they call me out, I took a, a screenshot and I said, why would you ask people to black me because when you look at the historical um uh, meaning of people on stacking strong powerful and rich and all of that so why would you think this is a bad thing but later on you find out that they didn't know this is what people on stacking was meant even though it was a fictional character back in probably i don't know is it 40 50 or 60 i don't remember the year but um people uh young people now they don't know about this from back then so yes the squads are very protective of megan so whatever it is that goes into their mind when they see certain things you know they their first thing is to defend harry and megan all right so i don't know what they saw on my tweet that but when i felt strongly about it i had to explain and say why are you doing this do you understand what i mean by this that i was this i was that and literally lily's hair was done in two buns like pp lawn stacking and i just got something about pp lawn stacking i don't remember how the tweet went but um the squad are very protective but when you see certain people uh i i, I don't know but this person i don't believe it okay i don't believe this person and what happened is that many of the people who say certain things about the squad they pretend to be squad and the thing is that many of the squad already know the profile name of people at one point what they were doing the haters on twitter they copy uh the profile let's say for myself they will copy my profile and then write their names on twitter as close as possible to my name like pyt and to summit whatever Okay, they will try to do something close to that vicinity and then try to cancel the original one. Okay, they try that with a lot of the squatters, but we know who's who already. All right, so this person I don't believe. All right, who is that again? Yeah, none of the squatters is following. So what I'm going to do here, go into it and black her ass. You don't come and say this nonsense here. All right, black. That's not true. Okay, that's Peg and Trelawney responding to her. Sorry, dear, but your Muggsit opinion doesn't count. All right, so there's this here, but you mean that uh, your IS. Okay, but you mean you is the ego, the absurd self righteousness. Who is that? This is someone I know. Okay, there they are again. I, oh, not this. Pagan stays, no matter what. I don't care what Pagan said. She's been in the game for a very long time. So she knows what's going on. Black. Sorry, I'm wasting my time here doing this. Uh, that is why they hate us. Can I read this? A few her British writer. She is serious. Check out her profile. I love this well-spoken lady. I forgot her name, but she's amazing. Okay, who are they making reference? Oh, the lady from the video. I already forgot what the tweet was about. The British media serves the interests of the monarchy only. And 1930, when Edward VIII was king, and dating Wallace Simpson, 
None of the British media covers the story, only the international media did. The British media's job is to preserve the Crown and the Crown's narrative. Hmm. It's true, sadly, it's true. They don't really care about people. They don't care about people, just the freaking Crown. This is purely evil, purely evil. Okay, why is she even commenting? Why monitor and comment on Megan and her supporters? Or unless it's a side hustle to make money. <laughs> yeah, I love that. They will always be reminded. Guess it was fun when it lasted. Like clockwork. That time when people discover the me you can't see was gold. <laughs> All right, so let's go to the next tweet. All right, I sort of love uh, the narrative of this, but I got to black some people anyway. Next tweet, all uh, right. So I think that's her again here. Okay, more a fewer Hirsch. Okay, so that's the name that they were saying here. A refresher course into how Meghan Markle's coverage by the British media was horrific since the beginning. This is a minute and seventeen seconds. One of the specific examples you use in in your op-ed piece is that uh, Prince Charles, I think, uh, edited uh, two issues of Country Life. Uh, is that Anderson Cooper? This thing is very small. Yeah, that's Ed Anderson Cooper. Okay, so there she is here. She's probably on the American TV. That's the first time I'm seeing it. That's a TikTok thing here. Okay, so that's Anderson Cooper. All right, I'm moving it back again. Let's start over. One of the specific examples you use in, in your op-ed piece is that uh, Prince Charles, I think, uh, edited uh, two issues of Country Life magazine, um, uh, Kate Middleton did, I think, uh, one, an edition of the Huffington Post, uh, and Prince Harry did a BBC program, and they were praised for that. Absolutely. Meghan Markle undertook to guest edit an edition of Vogue. It's really hard just if you take it in isolation to find anything to criticize about this. Instead of putting herself on the front cover, as for example, Kate Middleton had done, she decided to devote it to other women to shine a light on their activism. She featured women who were well known, those who are hardly known at all, and devoted the whole issue to how you can do good and make the world better. And for a week, the entire British media unpicked and condemned this as narcissistic. They accused her of not having chosen to put the queen among her inspiring women. They said that she uh, was behaving like fashion royalty instead of real royalty. And they also said that she was racist against white people because she didn't include more of them in the magazine. This really gives you a flavor of the sophistication, really, of the coverage of Meghan Markle and just how nasty it's been. Wow. She's starting to this is the second video of her, okay, that I've seen. And every time I hear her speak, it's similar to uh, Dr. Shola. Similar to Dr. Shola. So the, these are very few women in the UK who's standing up and saying what is actually happening. And then they get blamed for it. But um, yeah, that's that. There's that video again. Uh, why and never forget how Kensington Palace gave Dan Wooten some talking point that week. It was odious. Uh, I will never forget the nasty horror she endured for editing Vogue and highlighting other women instead. That's when they really latch on to calling her narcissistic. Okay, the way, what is it that Vogue guy, what's his name? A Musso or something like that? A little after, a couple months later, she he was being interviewed by uh, someone on CNN. I just could not believe what I was listening to. I was like, what? Was it CNN or ABC? One of those uh, new, um, US uh, kind of base uh, medias. I could not, ever since then, I could never stand this guy. Okay, uh, I don't even think he's uh, the, uh, is he still with Vogue? I think they have somebody else. Okay, I will never... F okay, I read this. Okay, whatever is here. The way they came at me again for that Vogue thing made it clear that the edict from on high was to demonize Megan for whatever she did. Everything she did had to be twisted into being bad. <laughs> that remind me when President Obama was president, how the Republican did. They will go against everything that uh, Obama was. So that's almost the same thing. I really hate British royal family and the UK media for this, pure racism. The British royal family copied everything she did. Everything Megan did was twisted and used to attack her. 
all right painful or fewer that's the heart isn't like those people and social media so happy she was included in the documentary wow Megan went through so much with these racist people over on Salty Island. Lord Jesus, thank you for keeping her alive. Yeah, everything Megan did was twisted and used to attack her. All right, so let's, there's more comment, but let's go to the next tweet. And this is what Pagan Trelawney was saying on the other tweet, that, uh, that the truth will come out eventually. All right, quote, I even wanted Camilla to be happy. Maybe she'd be less dangerous. Prince Harry, spare. Anderson Cooper, why was she dangerous? Prince Harry, because of the need for her to rehabilitate her image on the way to being queen, there was going to be bodies left on the street. <laughs> I don't know. This woman is evil. I don't think she sees any other way of doing things because her nastiness her ways her blueprint have been working so well for her she doesn't know any other way to do things right without stepping on somebody else but uh, luckily people are seeing things what's happening now they're trying they're trying to continue with their blueprint and trying to black the truth from coming out but the thing god is really helping us the light is really pushing to that deep thick wall of darkness we they're pushing through they're helping pushing through but we need to help with you know while the light is pushing the wall the thick wall of darkness we are on the opposite end because they already black many of us we already in the side where we are being blocked from seeing the light so we are opposite of the light we need to pull the wall while the light is pushing the wall well, my graphic is I'm seeing things in images. Okay, so we need to be on the other side and pull back the uh, I have a, a thumbnails that could explain that What I'm saying here, so we need to help pull the darkness while uh, light is pushing it We're pulling and then the light is pushing it to make it easier for us to pull it So light could come through because we're getting so close because the darkness was really really covering the entire world but uh we're pushing to all right so let's listen 35 seconds <laughs> i'm telling you you people might say <laughs> i'm crazy with the way i explain my things sucked in just people pushing mm -hmm. and then people pulling all in the same direction that she started a campaign in the british press to pave the way for a marriage and you wrote I even wanted Camilla to be happy. Maybe she'd be less dangerous if she was happy. Mm -hmm. How was she dangerous? Because of the need for her to rehabilitate her image. That made her dangerous? That made her dangerous because of the connections that she was forging within the British press. And there was open willingness on both sides to trade of information. And with a family built on hierarchy, and with her on the way to being Queen Consort, there was going to be people or bodies left in the street because of that. Wow that she started heavy understand this is what i said harry was too smart over there harry was too smart over there they had to divide the brother and get rid of him he was too smart and he probably was gonna be one of those bodies because that woman does not care and the father doesn't even care the father doesn't even care and then you have those foot soldiers will carry out the work for them this is very sad even though Harry have helped them, spoke for them. He was at the table for to speak on their behalf, almost like when Megan was in the UK. She was on the table to speak on behalf of many of the, the black Brits, but nah, they didn't want her to be the one speaking for them. I'm talking some black Brits over there. And then there's Harry for some of the soldiers. He was one of them. And sometimes you see the so some people and the soldiers will carry out the evilness for the institution against Harry, who will do anything to protect them. Do I make sense on this? Oh my God, this is where we need to play for, uh, we need to pray for the blind. Okay, Harry was part on, Camilla, the con woman, has destroyed his dear mother and tried to rebuild her image to be acceptable in public. She has been selling the royal family and return for better press for decades. Harry has done her mom proud to tell the truth. Camilla and Charles are de despicable. And to think some actually said he was rude. 
rude. He spoke what he knew and needed to be said. Uh, so the thing is that when some of the Devengers are saying, uh, Harry is saying lies and all of that. So there's Harry here talking exactly about Camilla, about rehabilitation. Then they have a uh, Operation PB going on for Camilla. Then we know about this already. Harry is reinforcing it and saying his side of it as well. Okay, on her being queen consort. Okay, and then once she become once the queen passed, what did she do? She said, no, she's not queen consort anymore. She's queen. Let me read this too and then move on to the next one. All right, Harry's father was one of the participants for destroying his mother. It's really unthinkable. All the people involved once Harry move on. The campaign was, in that point, was being successful. But it did surprise the, the people who were causing the grief. It did surprise them when I took myself out of the game. They hadn't expected that. And I'm a great believer that you should always confuse the enemy. Who was the enemy? <clears throat> well, the enemy was my husband's department. Because I always got more publicity. Uh, my work was m m was discussed much more than him, and you know, from that point of view, I understand it. But I was doing good things, and I wanted to do good things. All the people involved once Harry move on and said nothing. This one alone can make anyone feel lost and depressing. Uh, you just have to look at uh, the friend Camilla has in the media. They include Pete Morgan, Jeremy Clarkson, and Jill and Angela Levine. All right, let's go to the next tweet. Yeah, look what uh, was it the Clarkson said uh, about uh, Megan, you know, the op-ed that he wrote. And then was it before that Camilla was having lunch with that guy? So Heavy is part on. Everything Heavy said is part on. If those people feel like Heavy said something different, the court is there. Whenever I see disgusting picture of Kate Middleton laughing with Jason Kunoff, soon after he testified for the Daily Mail, I'm actually relieved because I know Kate and Jason are ending down in hell together. I hope they and William enjoy each other's misery. Why did I put this? Okay. She hasn't been Kate Middleton for 12 years. She is the princess of well. What the F? Maybe that was that when I was reading. So she's not Kate anymore? She is still Kate. Oh my God. That's three comment on the... Oh, there's my comment here. <laughs> Copy Kate then. There's a squad. This has to be a squad. Yep. Couple of them follow it. <laughs> All right. She said here. Copy Kate then and there's me here. Door map perhaps or control A, control C, control V. <laughs> that you help some. All right. I don't know. Yeah, I think that was the reason. Okay. What a vile thing to say. It's not because this is what they did. If they feel like they could do that to backstab Megan saying untruthful thing and the other one try to um, talk against her uh, in court. All right. So, you know, baggage for God. Oh, how sweet. All right. So let's go to the next one. And then they all are on uh, the, the squad um, thing. Let's black this one. All right, next tweet. Okay, so, oh, I, I knew I put something twice. So there it is again. So I put that twice. So I went over that already. I was like, I, I wasn't sure which one was it. All right, next tweet. We're not going to pretend as if Megan put to his thought and demanded that they leave the royal family. There's a laugh. Prince Harry was already one step out the door before Meghan. However, after the media, the royalists and their supporters come after his wife and son, he had enough. All right. Uh, they all pretended it was Meghan's fault. Okay. Prince Harry wanted to leave anyway. All right. Two minutes and eight seconds. And one of the things that I said when it comes to Harry leaving, I've said this many times. Obviously, it's my opinion. Harry never come out to say his side of the things if I'm right or wrong. But there's other clues that will tell you. I always felt like once William's children were a uh, age of um, to do royal engagement, and I think that's when Harry would have leave. But what they did here, which is what some of the tweets are saying here, is that they really push Harry to exit way earlier than when he anticipated.
Okay, so let's listen. As soon as they come after his wife and his child, he's like, it's not worth it anymore because he wanted to leave anyway. All right, so let's listen. Two minutes and eight seconds. Oh, that's law. my family is my priority whoa, whoa. <laughs> the audio the audio from very low to pew. all right so let me adjust it for my ear safety let's put it here all right so about here all right of my family is my priority right. right and that is the main reason that we left unfortunately the circumstances back there hasn't changed in fact it's only got worse um, I feel safe here. My family feels safe here. Um, I'm happy. My family's happy. There's a music, so I'm gonna have to lower it. This is the part that's really okay there's music now um this is the part that's really bugging them they're getting uh awards they're being recognized for the work that they're doing this is not what the palace wanted for them they wanted harry and megan to be struggling in need of them okay constant performing always aware of a camera uh, well he has to pay attention who's around him knowing that those crazies are all over they won't leave him alone Okay, I hope it isn't true, but I think she will in the end be seen to have destroyed his life. Uh, we shall see. Okay, so there's this uh, response to it. Harry wanted to live anyway, so it's not Megan who destroyed his life. The guy was, you know, really in despair. I think Megan gave him a lifeline. These people refuse to listen to what's going on, to the truth. Okay, so let's take the time, you know. Let's do this. Okay, when they see, show themselves, you just have to do it right away. All right, so the thing switch. I don't know what happened. All right, so this is someone who just put this an hour ago. That was not on my list, saying they are so cute. Good Sunday morning to all. All right, this is 13 seconds. Let's see. There's a music. This is what's good with the squad. They want to share happy moments, happy time with you. So they put this to say good morning. Even on Saturday, so there was some stuff that they put yesterday to wish us good morning. Next tweet. Okay. 